All right, chip of the day. This one is not exactly a chip, but we're going to call it chip of the day. Uh, it's a funny, funny part. Uh, it's got uh, four, four leads on the bottom. It's surface mount, so it stands up. Got a funny little thing here on the end. Uh, let's take a look at it. It is a TL1012 V2. It is a trans inductor regulator power inductor. Yeah, I'd never seen such a thing. I had no idea what these things are. Um, and why do I care? And why am I bringing it up today? Because a friend of mine gave me a whole bunch of them. <laughs> a whole bunch of them. So uh, I wanted to see if I could use them for anything. And uh, they are something I've never, never, ever seen before. It says they can operate up to three megahertz. Okay. Ferrite core. So they are kind of like a ferrite bead, sort of, kind of. Um, they have an inductance of 70 nanohenries to 170 nanohenries. I don't know why there's a range, but there is a range. And I did measure one. Um, I took this one and put some leads on it and stuck it in my, my fancy LCR meter. And I measured, uh, what was it, 80 something, around around 80, 80 uh, nano Henry. So I'll put a picture here. All right, uh, current range, 64 to 157 amps, <laughs> amps. Yeah, so you can put 100 amps through this thing. Yikes, uh, okay. Um, what's it for? Well, you look at the applications. It is for a multi-phase and V-core regulator. Okay, not quite sure what that is. Voltage regulator modules, VRMs, and high power density VRMs for servers and GPUs, and I still don't know what they are. All right, so first of all, before we take a look at how they're used, let's see how they're constructed. Let's see what one is, okay? Like I said, uh, it's got what appears to be four legs on it, so I don't know how that works, okay? So I cracked one open, and... Uh, I saw this U-shaped thing, and uh, let me show you under the microscope. So there is this, what looks to be silver, almost aluminum, U-shaped uh, thing, and then inside that is another little copper colored thing, all right? And so if you crack it open further, you find out there's actually it's actually a transformer. They're three quarter winding transformers, or maybe one, one, you can call them one wind, I guess. But there's one loop, and then inside of that is, a, is an inner loop. The outer loop is obviously good for 100 amps, because it's just a big piece of copper. Um, and the inner loop is lower current. So, but it's one loop. So what, what I mean, transformers don't really do much with one loop. Okay, I was kind of curious about the color too. It was this weird, almost looks like aluminum. So I, I ground off the uh, pads on one of them and found out, yeah, no, it's copper. Um, so, okay. Um, all right, so uh, let's see, what else can we say about them? Yeah, how do you use these darn things? All right, uh, the data sheet is not much help. All right, it just kind of says inductory type things. But if you go on the internet and you find these, uh, there's another company who makes one dual winding TLVR, right? Trans inductor L voltage regulator. Yeah, they're weird. All right, so how are they used? Well, they're used in circuits that I have never done before. So I, I'm very, not quite sure what's going on here, but they are, there are inductors. So if you, if you look at just one of these, okay, and you're gonna make a switch mode power supply, you have, you have, you have plus V coming in, and then you have a switch to the voltage and you have a switch to ground. So you're whacking on and off this inductor. So we, we've seen 
those before in other videos I've done where you whack on and off conductors, uh, inductors, and then you can generate voltages, all right? And you get this uh, spike and a spike and a spike, and then you have this droop in between, right? You have a capacitor that filters it, so you have this spike and then a droop, and then a spike and then a droop, and a spike and then a droop, right? And that's not enough, so you, you, you want it to go faster, but you can't go fast enough, okay? So what you do is you put another one in that is out of phase, okay? So this one is droop, 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 but it's out of phase. And then you add a third one that is out of phase. So you, you have a spike here, and a spike here, and a spike here. And then you add them together and you get a spike, 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 spike. You get a three phase, okay? And so you have these small droops in between the three phase. So that's why you have these multiple phase things, because you're generating one amp, 100 amps. These things are like generating 100 amps because these stupid microprocessors eat up 100 amps. So you have these multi-phase DC to DC converters, you're usually down converting. You're going from some high voltage down to like a volt and a half or something. So these weird down conversion, pulse, 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 multi-phase things. And you still get this droop, 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 droop thing because you get these pulses, right? They want to get rid of those droop, droop, droops. And so they invented these things. And I'm going to wave my hand because I don't really understand it. <laughs> I'm being completely honest. I just don't quite understand this thing. So this is how you this is how they're used. So if we if we ignore this over here, ignore ignore that part. Okay, then we have the same thing. We have a, a pull to ground, pull to VCC inductor. Here's the capacitor that we're charging up. So we get a we get a pulse, 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 pulse. One, two, three. One, two, three. Out of phase. Da, 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 and then we get this drooping in between here, right? All right. And then um, what happens if your load, so let's say we graph the load and we have a load and the load is maybe operating, let's say at uh, 50 amps, and then suddenly it jumps up to 70 amps. You get this jump in the load. You'll get this droop in your converters because you're gonna hump more current and it's, it's, it's not gonna do well, all right? So you take the secondary coils, right? This is the big 100 amp coil. You take these little coils and you put them in series and then you tie one end to ground and the other end to ground and you can have an extra inductor there, so an extra way to store voltage. So the best I can imagine this thing is that when you get this big spike, it'll induce a current in the secondary. And that induces a current in this one and this one as well, because they're in series. And so you pull a current and, the, and, and there's a, another inductor here that helps generate some more as needed current kind of on the fly. And somehow when this one starts to go bad, it tells this one hey, you're going to need to be higher, and it kind of like boosts it up and helps it. But don't tell me how it works. I, I mean, you can tell me how it works. Just don't ask me how it works. I don't know. But it's something like that. It's, it is, uh, this is just voodoo magic to me. Somehow, these secondary coils, that's the little that's the little coil on the inside, right? There's the big thing on the outside. That's this side. And then there's the little coil on the inside. That's this one over here. And they're all tied together. All those secondaries are tied together. And so they kind of all help each other smush things to make it all better. Yeah, don't ask me. But anyway, that's what they're for. And that's how you use them. Which means I have zero use for these things. I have, I have no, no use for a thousand of these inductors. I got to figure out maybe something else to do with them. All right. That was chip of the day, uh, the TL1012V2 uh, transinductor. There you go.